there are five theological truths that undergird the Reformation. They are Scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, and God's glory alone. I want to talk about this last one, God's glory alone, or soli dea gloria. What's important about soli dea gloria is that it really is a summary statement for all of the Reformation. What's ultimately at stake in the other four alone statements is the glory of God. So when we say scripture alone, what we're saying is it's God's voice through his word that we submit to and he alone has the authority. When we say Christ alone, Jesus as God in the flesh through his death and resurrection is the exclusive object of faith. He is the way, truth, and life. And faith alone and grace alone, it rightly gives God the credit as the initiator and secure of salvation. This is Paul's point when he says, so that no one may boast. Why? You can't boast in what you have not done. It is God's glory. In some ways, the Reformation then is a glory movement, confronting those who would try and stand in a space that is reserved for God alone and rightly orienting all of life, but especially salvation, around God's glory. To say scripture alone, Christ alone, grace and faith alone is to say this is through and for God. The glory belongs not to the priest or pope exercising authority or to the sinner being saved, but to God and God alone. Why is this so important? Consider what Paul says in Romans chapter 11, verse 36. Paul spends 11 chapters laying out the story of salvation, God's grace and mercy to sinners, and the crescendo to all of his work is this verse. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory and honor forever. God's glory alone is not just the summarizing truth for the Reformation, but the summarizing truth for all of creation. It summarizes the story of God and the purpose of life. In Isaiah, God says, I am the Lord, this is my name, I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. The Westminster Catechism says the purpose of life is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. John Calvin says that all creation is the theater of God's glory, the mirror of the providence and power of God. If life and salvation is for God and his glory alone, it then releases our hands from grasping for glory that is not ours and opens our hands to offer the worship that God deserves. And it is then that we see, as the reformers did, that God is not the means to an end. He is both the means and the end. It's through him and also for him. The great prize of Christianity is not that we get from him or even that we get with him, but that we get him. To us be the joy of knowing him and to him be the glory for who he is and all that he does.